Hi, I'm Steve Sample with Bama Talk. Don't miss a single episode of Bama Talk Show available now on iTunes, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast app and on the web at bigbrainsmedia.com. This is the Weather Extreme video. This is for Friday morning, the 25th of January. I'm James Spann. Cool and wet today. Thankfully, icing issues over East Alabama really hard to find, which is good. Let's take a look at the uh, uh, Skycam images around the network early this morning. These were captured at the uh, insane hour of 5 a.m. Here's a look at downtown Fayette. They are dry, and on the western side of the state, they're way above freezing there. Of course, we never expected uh, any issues there. Up in Huntsville, they are above freezing. And the Weather Service in Huntsville, they've canceled the advisory for Madison County. And there's the Coleman Sky Cam. And again, no rain so far. Temperatures well above freezing. It just looks like any bridge icing will be very, very, very isolated. Uh, there's the big picture this morning. And you can see how the flow is more zonal now. The amplitude has decreased around the nation. And yeah, we've got numbers that are way above freezing. Uh, Fort Payne, they were at 32 Last night at midnight, and there was some concern that the cold air damming effect would just keep the cold air coming. Well, temperatures have been rising, which is good. Fort Payne's got 37, Gadsden 39. You've got 43 in Anniston. So needless to say, icing issues over there in East Alabama just aren't going to happen with numbers like that. And I'm sure the Weather Service offices will be probably dropping that advisory soon. Uh, there's a look at the numbers around the southeast, and you can see it's like 18 up in uh, Asheville, North Carolina. you got upper 20s in Georgia, but uh, this time the wedge just wanted to stop at the Alabama border. And that's another one of the great mysteries in this science. It's the cold air damming and the wedge effect and how deep that thing goes. Often it goes farther west than you might think, but not in this case. And again, for now, that's the advisory for uh, parts of northeast Alabama, and again, we figure that will be dropped pretty soon. But to the north and east of here, winter weather advisories up for a pretty good chunk of East Tennessee, North Carolina, West Virginia, on up into Pennsylvania for the potential for snow and ice up that way today. Okay, this is the day four through eight convective outlook. You know, the other issue is the potential of severe weather next week. Well, the guys at SPC have dropped any risk in the day four through eight outlook for next week due to model madness and the uncertainty involved. You know, uh, they've had Arkansas outlooked on Tuesday for a couple of days, but again, for now, that has been dropped. And this is the rain for the next five days. This carries us through uh, Wednesday morning of next week. Uh, bigger numbers north of here. We figure the better rain should come just after this period, during the day Wednesday and maybe Wednesday night, as you'll see. And there's a peak at the radar. This is at 5.06. There's not much out there. The uh, more significant precipitation is uh, north and east of here over Tennessee. And even there, it's not all that heavy. But we do expect some light rain at times today. But obviously, with a look like that and the limited moisture rain today, we'll be on the light side. This is the 06E GFS valid at noon. The core energy well north of here and down below that, a little light rain. And it sure looks like amounts are going to be under a quarter inch for most spots. Uh, cloudy, highs in the 50s. What about the weekend, you ask? Tomorrow should be a pretty decent day. Uh, the sky partly to mostly sunny. And again, temperatures should be seasonal with highs in the 50s. You know, the average high here never drops out of the 50s. Uh, uh, this is a relatively mild climate down here. Uh, the coldest part of the winter, which is basically now the average high in the 50s, average lows in the 30s. Uh, the GFS is printing a high of actually 60 tomorrow. The NAM is at 55. Uh, Sunday, same deal. Uh, should be mostly dry. Evidence of a little moisture coming back, but I think we'll leave it dry. And we might be pushing 60 on Sunday. The sky partly sunny. All right, next week, how that western trough lifts out will determine what happens with our weather. I think there's no doubt we get a good rain event at midweek, but any severe weather possibilities we will be determined by the behavior of that trough. Uh, down below that, Monday should be a very mild day. Highs go up in the 60s. Uh, the GFS is showing 65, and there might be a shower, but nothing widespread. Tuesday, same thing. The dynamic support is well to the west. Temperatures will rise up to near 70. Hey, an old Bermuda high easing in here like summer. And while you can't rule out the chance of a shower, obviously the bulk of the day will be dry. That will be a very spring-like day. All right, this is Wednesday. The trough gets closer and down below that, showers and storms evolve uh, to the north and west of here. Uh, the surface low is near St. Louis. 
And that could certainly be a setup for strong to severe storms if this is right for the Mid-South during the day. And then finally, Wednesday night, the batch of showers and storms moves in here as the surface low moves to near Michigan. And if this is right, this would suggest if there's an issue, it would be mainly with damaging straight line winds, not really a tornado threat. But again, we're still, you know, days out and we'll have to watch this. And then following that on Thursday, the weather turns noticeably colder as highs drop in the 40s. That'll be a big change. We'll go from a high near 70 on Tuesday and Wednesday to a high maybe in the low to mid 40s on Thursdays. That'll be a good 25 degree drop with a chilly north wind and Friday of next week. That's going to be a cold morning. Uh, we could uh, see lows down toward the low 20s and uh, the day should be sunny but cold. Let's check the end of the forecast the 9th of February. Uh, again, that's not an overly cold look there. You don't see a big western ridge tapping the cold air. There's some energy coming through, and that would be just wet. There's a low in the Gulf, but looks like the air would not be sufficiently cold for winter weather mischief if this is right. And we all know it's all voodoo out there. That's it for the Weather Extreme video this morning. We'll have notes in the blog next video here by 4 o'clock today. And don't forget to watch us on ABC 3340 News tonight at 4, 5, 6, and 10 on the live stream or the television side. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, and God bless. Who's got time to listen to boring radio shows? If you're going to listen to something, listen to something good, like eavesdrop. My favorite thing about Christmas is not the presents. No. And it's not the million no. Christmas parties. And it's not playing Dirty Santa. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's about relationships. relationships. I know. I know exactly where you're going it, with that. Yeah. It, it just is. It is. And take the time. What if this is your last Christmas yeah. and you never know? Just talking it up. They may use the name Jesus in a terrible way when they hit their thumb with a, you know, <laughs> with a with a hammer by accident on right. Saturday afternoon when they're working on their car. But don't bring Jesus into a song and give him a beer. That ain't right. Hey, I know a few <laughs> of those folks myself. Bama Talk Show. But before we head for the Dome, we got business to take care of at home. So making plans for the throwdown in downtown Atlanta, we'll have to wait until that post-game rammer jammer rings in the postseason for Bama and the off-season for the barn. Auburn unleashed. That magical score that, that Auburn fans remember, 17-16, came out of that game. And Bill Newton was responsible for the, for the chant, punt, Bama, punt. Bill, thank you for joining us. Uh, good afternoon, Adam. I appreciate y'all having me as uh, the first guest on your show. Worldview Matters. And, you know, we've been talking about a number of things. Last couple of times we talked about socialism. We moved from Islam to socialism, and we were going to continue today to do the same thing. But a lot of things have happened in the world in the past 10 days. Uh, oh, it's yeah. heated up again in, in, in Israel. So I thought it would be a good uh, chance for us to talk about some of the things that relate to worldview as it relates to the Israeli situation and Egypt and all that's going on in the Middle East. High School Heroes. And the plane goes right through the bridge and doesn't catch on fire. It's tons of stuff, man. Uh, tons of unrealistic stuff, but hey, it was really cool, actually. Warning, any of these shows can be addictive and they are all fun. Listen on iTunes, Stitcher, your favorite podcast app, or on the web at bigbrainsmedia.com.